Good morning. Well, I guess I get to use the gavel a bit. I'd like to convene this press conference. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. It is the uh, 73rd day of the session, the uh, 30th Alaska Legislature's first session. I'm Representative Dan Sadler. I'm pleased to be here. Good morning, Nat, to open up this uh, Senate, or excuse me, House uh, Republican Caucus Press uh, availability. My brief opening comment is just that as the Senate uh, session approaches its end, we'd heard earlier that the, uh, the priorities of our leadership was to reduce the budget, to find uh, revenue sources, and to have a clear and open process. My concern is that we have uh, not seen that happen. As the session approaches its end, we're seeing that the priority has been to raise revenue, uh, to resist every budget reduction, and to have a process which is confusing and uh, not very inclusive. I think that Alaskans are uh, not going to be too happy and are not too happy with the leadership in the House. Uh, we in our caucus stand ready to work for solutions and to make sure we cut spending, protect the private industry and the opportunities that it provides for Alaskans, and to resist an income tax. After that, I'll go to my colleague Steve. Thank you. I've got a positive attitude right now. You know, we can still get out of here, but we're going to have to do a lot of work to try to get there. We're going to have to start working more than just a 1.30 this afternoon before finance meets again. We've got a lot of work to do. House Bill 115 is the big priority right now, and it's a mess. Uh, the, the administration said that they have a bunch of fixes that they want to do to the income tax side. Uh, the governor spent $85,000 uh, with a consultant to write a tax bill for an income tax. But he's not here to explain it, and it hasn't been explained well. Uh, Director Spanos was there yesterday and said that the administration has got several amendments that they want to put in to fix the income tax side of 115. When are we going to see those? They said they had to have theirs in at the same time we have to have our amendments in, which is Friday. So we're, we haven't even seen a complete bill yet, which is real concerning. <laughs> well, 115 covers so many aspects that it's, co it's confusing to the public. We had uh, public testimony yesterday on uh, 115 and mainly the income tax side, but it also included permanent fund. Um, by far, the people were saying no to both of those. Uh, people are upset. They don't understand all of it either. The income tax side is real confusing because we're taxing things that the federal government doesn't even tax. Uh, it, it's it's uh, difficult to follow how you're going to end up paying your taxes. Right now, the median income uh, family with no kids, $1,800 in taxes. If you've got uh, uh, two kids, you're going to be paying $3,100. In, in state income tax. Uh, this is a difficult pill to swallow. We're taking half your permanent fund, and then we're going to take the other half in taxes, or more than the other half. So we've got a lot of work to do to try to get this bill straightened out. There's, there's other aspects of it that, that are uh, not acceptable either, and, and it's real confusing. There's seven different bills out there on permanent fund uh, POMV right now. And uh, which one of those is going to be able to be worked, I don't know yet either. So it kind of slows the whole process down when, when you can't get an explanation of exactly what that they want to have as a final product. Uh, there's, there's a lot of questions out there on that. Thank you. Representative Johnson. All right. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good morning. Um, lots of exciting things happening in my office this week, but I, I want to first of all talk a little bit about the concerns I also have with uh, HB 111 and HB 115. And because when I look at the, the oil, ta oil and gas taxes and I look at the motor fuels tax, um, as a Valley representative, I know it hits my constituents very right in the pocketbook. I mean, we have a lot of people out in the Valley or young people. They move to the Valley because it's a little less expensive to live there. The trying to make a living, and those are the people that the income tax, this H HB 115, is really going to affect. I mean, the fact that we have young people, hardworking people, they're, they're not the super rich, the uber rich that uh, uh, that's talked about so much. They're people that are honest, trying to make an honest day's work. And that, I mean, I have real concerns about HB 115 for that reason. And I, we're, we're in the minority. We don't get to exempt out the, the fishermen or this group or this group. I mean, it's just going to hit all the people that are working hard in the valley. So, and all over the state. But, you know, my constituents, I'm, I'm hearing a lot from them. HB 115, we passed out of resources onto finance. We didn't make changes in our amendments because it's just something that's so big and so mixed up that it was better to not even try to fix it. So let's turn that over to finance to let them try to work on it. Um, 
that that's another one that um, we have tax policy that's in place that uh, started I mean it's supposed to take effect in January of this year and we're already changing that and so if we're we're doing you know all these changes every year we're coming up with a new tax policy how can anyone try to move forward on things so I I, I mean I have real concerns about the fact that we have well, my concern is we have production up for the first time in years and years in our pipeline, and that was a huge concern a few years ago that we were going to have to shut the pipeline down, that we weren't have, going to have an oil flow. We finally got that up there. Something is working, and something's working well, and now we're going to change that. So I have concerns, but real concerns about HB 111 as well. But on a positive note, we have uh, right. on a positive note. Um, I did sponsor House Joint Resolution 15, and it's a resolution that's now passed out of committees. It's waiting to be scheduled on the floor, and this is uh, this is the Real ID Act requesting and, and asking the president and our U.S. Uh, senators and congressmen to uh, in repeal uh, that piece of legislation. The Real ID is a it's a it's a national ID system that affects where it affects Alaska more than any other state. We have to travel through, we have to travel so much, everyone flies. Um, not having a piece of real ID compliant um, ID can really affect everyone in Alaska very much. So, and it's not just a matter of taking on this unfunded mandate that the, the feds have put on us. 1.5 million in the time where we're trying to reduce our budget. I mean, it's time to just kind of push back on that. Actually, the amendments in, in committee made that a stronger bill asking the governor to, or it's not a bill, excuse me, a stronger resolution. Um, this same, same resolution was passed in 2005 by both houses. Um, so, um, I, but I'm excited to have that uh, go forward with seven due passes coming out of committee. It's a, it's one of the most co-sponsored pieces of legislation in the house. Um, so I brought it forth, I mean, for a, a variety of reasons. A big piece is the unfunded mandate, but um, we, it's also, you know, have respect for the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution, the import, importance of personal identity, security, and really because of how many phone calls my office receives weekly from people who are sincerely concerned about the impl implementation of this system um, that we did not vote for being forced upon in the state of Alaska through the Real ID Act. So, and that's, that's what's happening in my office this week. I'm on to Chuck. Chuck, Thank you. Talk. Thank you, Delena. Well, to continue on the positive theme, um, I was elected as a part-time legislator and to get things done in 90 days, if at all possible. Uh, we, we all recognize that there are still some heavy lifts, but I remain hopeful that even though, yes, we're probably going to go over that deadline, that uh, we don't have to be here much longer than that. We're actually um, largely in agreement that we have a multi-prong approach that has to be looked at. Um, reduce spending, we have to be able to um, look at uh, a, some type of POMV, of course not everybody's on board with that, but I think most of the legislature is overall, and we have to also look at uh, revenue where it's appropriate. And so now we're just talking about uh, what that looks like, and we all recognize that hard choices are going to have to be made. But um, I think that probably our legislature as a whole is more solution oriented and less blame oriented than it's been in a long time. And some of that is just the overwhelming sense, no matter what district you're in, people want you to um, work toward a solution. And I think that's good. And I encourage people to keep uh, letting uh, us know that and so that we can uh, keep driving at a solution. Um, another thing that's not budget related, but I think is even more that I've been very encouraged to see is Alaska is really, I think, waking up as a state to the, uh, the problem of suicide in this state. We've had more than 200 a year for a few years. Um, we are recognizing that the health of our rural communities is really fragile and they are what makes Alaska, Alaska. And some of the exciting things that are happening with the telecommunications build out, whether it's with the Alaska plan, the FCC, just approving a large uh, capital spend, which our telecommunications providers are going to be pushing out um, into villages. And that includes, of course, the Quintillion, which is all project, which is all private money. But <coughs> what that means is telehealth. That means mental health counseling. That means schools, education, virtual education online. That means encouragement and hope that we haven't had in a long time where the isolation factor and the aloneness factor 
is diminished and people feel more integrated into our whole state as a community. Those are some very positive things that are going on. They can get lost in the, the budget discussion and, um, and ultimately those things will result in improved public safety. So um, on, a, on a personal legislation uh, note, you know, I, I just uh, have two things I'm working on. One is uh, some right-of-way issues along the railroad right-of-way. I'm very pleased to say that uh, we've made great strides uh, working towards a negotiated settlement with the railroad and treating those people that live along the right-of-way as landowners and protecting their interests and, and yet still uh, allowing the railroad to safely uh, operate and maintain the railroad. So, and then, of course, I'm really interested in victim restitution and plan to have a bill here soon that will address the tens of millions of dollars in unpaid restitution to victims of crime. Um, we have a criminal fund, which is money from victims, um, or I should say money from people who are, have been made ineligible due to the fact that they have committed offenses. So they are ineligible for a PFD, and in 1988, the legislature said if you are ineligible as a result of a felony conviction or your third misdemeanor conviction in, in five years, you have to forfeit your PFD, and that'll go into a fund to help compensate crime victims. Well, right now, that fund has a little over $20 million, and almost all of it goes to pay for inmate health care, and about $1 million goes to victim restitution. So. I'm working on fixing that, prioritizing that, so we can actually get money to go to restoring victims to a pre-offense uh, condition and uh, help uh, r uh, restore some, uh, some broken lives out there and get people back on their feet. So those are kind of our office priorities right now. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kopp. So we'll let Mallory pass the mic around. Good morning. Those. Liz Raines with KTVA. Uh, Representative Gabrielle Ledoux has introduced a bill to open primary elections. Um, wondering what your caucus thinks of that. I'll take that. I guess we have, uh, that just was read right across. We've not taken a caucus position, but uh, uh, the rules chair is uh, fairly creative with her approaches to different activities and legislative standpoint. So uh, I guess it's no surprise that she's found a, a potentially interesting way to uh, to allow her or other people's future elections to uh, be different from what they have been in the past. We'll look at it, certainly, and see if it's in the best interest of Alaskans. Um, certainly, as a Republican, I believe that my party's positions are correct and uh, benefit the state. And I think that the current primary system we have, where the best Republican wins or the best Democrat wins, is a little fairer than having things be mixed up and have independents run either race and having the top two. That's a, that's a rather radical change to Alaska's electoral politics. And I think we look at it very carefully and very cautiously. <coughs> I, I just want to take a little little comment on that. We we also had that we have a number of voter changes. I mean, I, I, I didn't I don't know if this is normal, but as a freshman, I'm thinking how many different ways can we change up the the system for voting in elections in Alaska? And one that one that really stands out to me is this one where we have the national electoral vote where where uh, that was in our committee that was passed out this past week and and um, you know wanting to change Alaska so we we bind our our electoral votes with other other states and so I I guess I'm really concerned just in a as a from a holistic level that we're taking these all these different voter type changes I think we're hearing today the vote by mail uh, possibility in state affairs so I mean it's just one thing after another we we're getting on on changing up voting so it's not just that one and several that we really need to look at as I think as a big as a big picture so I have some concerns when we're trying to change up our whole system now, <clears throat> uh, good morning Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News um, I wanted to ask me representative uh, Johnson and representative Thompson since you guys were uh, two folks who were talking about